Hello, my name is Paul Haig. I'm restoring a 1966 Lev Silan Series 2 and in this video we'll look at the chassis. The chassis is uh, made out of mild steel, um, largely 18 gauge which is 1.2 millimetres thick uh, with some areas thickened to 1.6 millimetres thick if you can call that thick. Uh, it's mild steel and in total ways, well the sheet metal so not all of this that you can see, but the sheet metal chassis weighs 40 kilograms, which is 88 pounds. Um, it's fixed to the body in 16 points. We looked at those points through the body. I'll point them out on the chassis as we go around. Um, and as you can see, it's a box section in the center, um, which splits into um, two sections which run either side of the engine and the gearbox running up to where the front suspension is mounted. So these front turrets um, fix to the front of the chassis and between the front turrets there's a box section which runs across. Um, which you can see down here. The front turrets hold the fulcrum pins uh, which the inside of the wishbones pivot on and between the turrets is a box section. I just shift that handbrake cable out of the way. So there's a box section runs between these turrets uh, and off the front edge of the box section are these outriggers um, which hold the steering rack. If we move to the back, um, you can see the box section again divides into two, um, which runs back to these rear uprights, which hold the top of the suspension struts. Um, these are known as Chapman struts, and these two rear uprights are joined by this beam section. Um, which has two mounting points, you can see there, for the final drive differential. And you'll see then down here, there is the bottom of the chassis extends back from that central box section and is attached to the uh, beam going across the top by these two tubular sections which are bent to avoid the um, where the rear drive shafts will be and the bottom of the Chapman strut is joined to this very wide A-frame so the A-frame pivots off the chassis, the base of the chassis um, and is made as long as possible um, so that the suspension geometry is as good as it can be. Where the chassis divides at the back and we've got the front end of the differential shine some light in there so you can see the universal joint on the prop shaft propeller shaft which runs up the center of the um, box section um, that makes up the center of the chassis and you can see i obviously need to get in there and do some polishing it's a bit grimy um, if you look around the side you'll see that there's access hole in the side of the chassis where the um, universal joint the other end of the prop shaft is and where it goes into the um, rear of the gearbox. We've got cable running up the inside of the box section as well um, which comes out here which is the handbrake cable. We go around to the back you can see um, this arrangement here. Get rid of the light, I mean a flight. Um, so the handbrake cable pulls on this um, tree arrangement as it's named, I think. Um, and that pivots 
and off these two fixing points the rods run either way so this one going to this side this one going to the other side and operates the handbrake uh, pads which are on the discs okay also on the box section is this um, insulation material which is glued um, quite fibrous someone suggested that that would soak up lots of water um, and cause corrosion uh, may have done in the past but that wasn't why the chassis had failed on this particular car anyway I've gone with the same arrangement and it provides sound deadening between the chassis and the body and the body sits over this there's a large tunnel um, between the seats in the body uh, which straddles the chassis just quickly looking at the 16 fixing points these holes have only been pilot drilled I'll drill them out so two fixings screws go through into threaded bobbins there the back two at the top of these rear uprights this is uh, quite thick material here so these get tapped so screws go into those and they're also the rear uh, well the mounts for the top of the seat belts um, two here two here two here this is the front of the uh, footwell there's two on the top of the chassis here you can just see where plates welded thick plates welded to the underside so these are drilled and tapped and then top of the turrets uh, again there's a thick plate welded on here so these are drilled and tapped and then right at the front these two on the outriggers at the front uh, which are just drilled and screw through into threaded bobbins so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen this is a, a replacement chassis um, it's made when Lotus was still making them uh, although I think they always subcontracted them out um, so this has got um, a galvanised finish which I've then primed um, with the correct primer so it doesn't fall off and then painted black um, although I think I've subsequently found out that for a series 2 it should probably be painted red um, anyway it's staying black now I've painted it black the chassis number the replacement number is here um, you might just be able to see I don't know if it'll focus but it starts LR which is for Lotus replacement um, 26 is the type of the car um, so that's where the number is and when the car's assembled you can still see that number looking into the engine bay um, and as we said it's largely made out of um, 1.2 millimeter thick material um, so seems quite flimsy maybe um, the box section as you can imagine is very torsionally rigid and when this is bolted to the body um, the two assembled together are extremely torsionally rigid so for an open top sports car um, it's extremely impressive in that respect just looking at a few of the failure points um, it's a very lightweight design as we said and it did suffer um, a few failures so these are the engine mounts um, the engine mounts crack across here um, in time whether that's because the rubber part of this engine mount fails and starts to put more stress but you can imagine with the um, the movement of the engine it's probably just a fatigue crack so both sides you get crack that runs across um, and then possibly worse than that are these um, rear uh, front turrets where the uh, coil and shock absorber go into the chassis here um, there's a section can get my finger inside so it's like a box section and it's open here 
So water and muck being thrown up by the road wheels um, can make its way inside here and drop down to the bottom of this box section um, and it just fills up. There are some drain holes here, you may be able to see them, um, which may well get blocked because um, if you don't know to clear it out they would and then it just sits with moisture inside so it rots away from the inside and this one's galvanised um, so it shouldn't have that problem but to be fair the type of use it's going to get it's probably going to be well maintained um, and made sure these drain holes at the bottom I can't quite see now um, stay clear just see it there Um, another interesting aspect of the chassis, this box section has got a pipe coming off the front of it. Um, so this box section is used um, as a vessel to hold vacuum pressure. So a pipe runs from that, um, goes to the dashboard where there's a switch and also runs up to the front manifold and attaches um, onto this fitting. So as air is rushing into the cylinders, um, fast air movement across the end of this causes a venturi effect, so it drops the pressure and will suck air through the pipe. Um, there's a non-return valve, so it draws the pressure in this box section down, um, so it's somewhat under vacuum. And that vacuum pressure is used to uh, lift the headlamps, the headlight up with a, a sort of rubber diaphragm pod arrangement um, which we'll show in a later video. Um, see that fitting there, pipe fitting at the front. So that's a quick walk around the chassis of a Lotus Elan. Um, it stayed the same throughout the production of the Elans, Series 1 right up to Series 4 in the Sprint. Um, and the Lotus Elan Plus 2 has a very similar chassis. Um, so if you buy a Lotus replacement chassis for the Lotus Elan, it's the same part throughout the production run. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, I'm sure I'll be posting more videos, so keep a look out for those as well. And thanks for watching.